In this video, I'd like to introduce the concepts of eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. So in the first video of this module, I presented what I called the matrix equation, which I consider to be the central quantity of linear algebra. And one way of interpreting this equation is to say that there is some transformation encoded in matrix A that is applied to a vector X, and it gives you a new vector B. And in physics, we are often interested in a particular case of this equation. In the case where you have your matrix A, you apply it to some vector C. And what you get back is that same vector, but scaled by a constant factor, which we denote by lambda. So in other words, the only effect that A has of A on your vector is to scale it by a factor of lambda. All right, and vectors that satisfy this property are known as eigenvectors. And the corresponding uh, scaling factor are called eigenvalues. And what we're ultimately interested in, in this type of problem, is finding the, val the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a particular matrix A. So to do that, we need to recast this equation in a slightly different form. So I'll move this vector over. So first, I'll rewrite this in a slightly different form. Lambda, I'm going to add the identity matrix that is multiplying this vector. And if you recall, this is the same thing. When you apply the identity matrix to a vector, you just recover that same vector. The reason we're doing this is because now we can move everything to the other side so that we can satisfy the uh, dimensions for taking the difference of two matrices. And we're left with this type of equation. Now, from the example on solving a system of linear equations, you'll recall that if we're trying to find what this vector C is, then we need to find the inverse of uh, this matrix. And bring it over to the other side where this is a vector of zero. So uh, a vector whose elements are zeros and it's not the same dimensions as your vector C. However, if we do this, multiplying any matrix by the zero vector gives you zero. So if this matrix has an inverse, then the only solution to the system of equations is that your vector C is equal to the zero vector, which doesn't really tell you anything. So we call this the trivial solution. It's completely uninteresting to us. So we need to find a condition under which this matrix doesn't have an inverse so that we can have different solutions than the trivial solution. And just to refresh your memory, we have previously presented the following equation for the inverse of a matrix. And what this equation tells you then is if the determinant of your matrix is equal to zero, 
then the inverse can't exist because you'll be dividing by zero. Okay, so we have a condition under which a matrix wouldn't have an inverse. So we have a condition that we can satisfy so that we can find solutions to this system of equations that's different from the trivial solution. So if we call this equation one, Then for that to not have the trivial solution, we must satisfy the condition for this matrix to not have an inverse. And we can say that the determinant of A minus lambda times the identity matrix must be equal to zero. And this is the central equation of the eigenvalue problem. And it's usually called the characteristic equation, and we use it to find the eigenvalues of a particular matrix. Right, once all of the eigenvalues are known, we can find the corresponding eigenvectors by solving plugging in the value of our eigenvalue and solving the system of equations. And we'll see in an upcoming example in the next video how we do this in practice.